Hey, this is Anthony Thrift. So, TV, you can watch this side and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new HJC Arfa ST helmet available at Revzilla.com. So part of the ARFA line from HJC, this is their top end. We've seen an ARFA 10, we've seen an ARFA Max. This is the ARFA ST, which is now gonna be sport touring. And when I see, think of sport touring, I think longer distance optimized, comfort ventilation features, and a helmet that's probably happiest in the three quarter to the upright position versus that ARFA Max or the ARFA 10, which is gonna be your sport oriented helmet, or the Arfa Max, which is your modular for nearly $100 more. Now they're coming in in between that three and $400 mark, which is a premium price point. Heavy competition in that category. You're going to have things like the Scorpion XOT 1200, which is more sport touring oriented. And if you make a little bit more of an investment, you're graduating right into that Shark Vision R or that showy GT Air range. So again, stiff competition here, but for what they've put together, really standing on the shoulders of some of their premium technology that came out with this Arfa series in the last few years, actually pretty happy to see them concoct it in a way that's going to be very usable and perform pretty well. Now this is the black version. There's going to be a handful of colors. There's also some graphics that kind of ratchet it out. They're going to be a little bit more expensive. And the first thing we noticed is again, you're looking at that performance or that premium integrated matrix shell. A lot of features we've seen from before on this shell from that Arfa series. And again, remember you have that drop down sun visor. So again, you're saving yourself the shield change mechanism. You're saving the ability to be able to have that versatility at speed for longer distance riding. And again, you're getting a solidly venting helmet. We went out, we put a handful of miles on it. We found that it was quiet enough for our taste. It head checked well, and it also vented pretty solidly, even though you're really looking at a brand new vent configuration from HJC with a single two position top vent and then two winglet vents as you move to the back that are very passive. But again, they perform quite nicely. Now, when we get into the fit side of things, intermediate oval head shape, five years ago, you'd say, oh my gosh, HJC, they're so round. These days it fits spot on with what I tend to feel is the best fit for the American market that discounts some of the outliers. Intermediate oval, a little bit longer front to back, comforting as well as supportive through the cheek pads. Again, no surprises there. If you're really round or you're extremely narrow, probably not the best fit, but there are helmets that are designed for those outlier cases. So again, no questions here with regard to the fit. It's going to be in line with the ARFA series. And remember, if you're concerned about fitment, we're going to ship for free over 39 bucks. And I'd always love to hear your comments, your questions, your feedback on YouTube. Be sure to click like right there and subscribe to us. Leave me those comments, ask those questions, and let me hear your gut reaction to the new Arfa ST. Now, if we work from the outside and work our way in, let's walk through some of the nuances here. Again, you're looking at a shell shape and design that's aerodynamic. It's meant to be stable at speed and more of that three quarter to upright riding position, potentially sitting behind a higher windscreen. Notice it's the premium integrated matrix. So it's carbon fiber, fiberglass, organic resins here in an amalgamation of a strong and lightweight shell. And it's fairly light as well. It's gonna be the lightest helmet in the Arfa line, even in incorporating a dual density liner with your drop down sun visor. Again, you're looking at around three pounds, four ounces for a medium. That's a significantly light helmet, in my opinion. Again, when you stack it up against some of the other helmets that you see in a range. Now it is only DOT and ECE rated. It's not gonna carry that Snell rating, keep that in mind. But again, it's a rock solid design covering their higher end bases with regard to the shell. Looking at the aerodynamic profile, again, we talked about the vent scheme. Here on the back, you're gonna see these winglets. They are a little bit tough to pick up here on the black version, but again, they're passive and they are covered. So they're not gonna get in the way of mother nature, but they're gonna get strong airflow over top, getting you that passive Venturi effect out behind the helmet that's gonna help evacuate warm, moist air from the head. And then if we look here on the front, you're going to see there's a two position. And again, it's open and more open here on the top of the helmet that's gonna vent directly down the Mohawk. This is a little bit different than we've seen on any of the other HACs. Anytime we see a brand new style event, we wonder how well it's gonna perform from a quiet standpoint. And again, we put miles on it and it was just fine. Now, if we flip around to the back, you're also gonna see a couple other passive winglet vents we'll call them rear diffusers. As you work your way down, you're gonna see them down here along the bottom. Again, these areas, they're mesh back. They're gonna allow for another area of air to circulate down behind the back of your head and be evacuated out through the outside of the helmet. Now, if we work our way past the outer shell, the aerodynamics and the vent scheme, let's talk about the visor and the shield mechanism. Now, if we dive into the shield mechanism, you're gonna see this center lock. And again, that's race inspired, but there's flexibility there. There's a couple values. One, you can hit it with either hand. It's easy, it's not relegated to one side. The other value is because it's in the center, it has a great deal of force that's then applied to the gasket, which is gonna give you a solid seal from mother nature. I'm a fan of it. I like the center lock, we're seeing more and more helmets go down this route. Now, if we look at the shell itself, it's optically correct. It's their premium shell, again, designed to be more of a sport touring format, which means you're going to see a range of temperatures. Now, if we look at it, it's got pin lock posts and the pin lock lens is in the box. And you'll also notice it's a max vision layout, which is the largest pin lock configuration. 
That's a nice touch, that's a nice value, it's a nice add-on, and what it does is it saves HJC from having to do a fog-free coating on this shield, which will eventually wear off. And what it gives you is that physical barrier between you and Mother Nature, and it's gonna allow your shield to stay fog-free by basically creating a double-paned window effect. Now, if we open it up, you're gonna see that I have my drop-down sun visor, and it's actuated on the left and right side. It's gonna be anti-scratch, optically correct, it's gonna be anti-fog, again, they're doing that, it tracks back into the helmet. I will say this, I like the actuator much better on the Arfa Max helmet, which is a little bit more expensive. And that's gonna be the actuator to operate that down the mohawk of the helmet. For whatever reason, they chose to design it this way. I'll just say that the cable mechanism on some of the other high-end helmets on the market are a nicer, cleaner, smoother actuation or less jerky. I think that jerkiness over time could potentially begin to wear out. Again, just my two cents, not having put 2,000 miles on this helmet. But again, if we look at it, it's just something that they could definitely improve in the longer term. And again, diving in here to that gasket that we spoke about, it's a solid gasket and the ability to have that front lock on the helmet is gonna give you a better chance of having that gasket really come into play and create a great seal. Now you'll notice I didn't push it down all the way. That's because I wanna show you the side or the shield change mechanism. And because you have a drop down sun visor, you're really not going to have to carry an extra shield unless you really want to because again, you have that flip down to cover you from the sunlight, no need for that dark smoke shield. But if I move it up here and I press on the side, Really quick, really simple. That's your evacuation point for your shield. If I pop it back on, very, very simple as well. So everybody is getting much better in all of the helmet manufacturing that we're seeing these days up north of that $250 range at making a shield change mechanism. That's gonna be much more rock solid. Now again, as you make it your way down to the chin bar, not a ton of changes. Again, a similar style that we've seen. It's a one position, it vents to the shield. There's your chin vent again optimized for a more three-quarter upright experience, optimized to get great airflow, optimized to be comfortable at speed. And when I pull the comfort liner out, you're going to see the interior guts of the helmet, a lot of different cutaways, a lot of wear for the air to circulate over top of your head, especially if you're sweating, and give you the chance to be cool, be calm, and be collected. Last order of business here, out around the shield. If you're thinking that you have maybe one of the brother helmets or sister helmets of this in the ARFA family, and you might want to interchange your HJ20 shield, do keep in mind that the ARFA 10 is going to be that 2D flat shield, which is more race oriented in the HJ20 flavor. This HJ20 is actually the HJ20 ST, which is a little bit different, has a 3D effect to it. It's going to be better suited for sport touring riding in that configuration. So again, if you have some dark shields or iridium shields from other ARFA models, they're not going to be interchangeable here on the ARFA ST. Now, if I grab my donut here and I flip this bad boy on its side, let's walk through the guts. Classic HJC ARFA series guts here. They're going to be antimicrobial, wicking, they're gonna be very comfortable, and again, they're gonna be the more higher end components that you're used to seeing. Double D ring construction, no surprises here. And you do have two snaps here that you're gonna be able to install a chin curtain if you so desire. The other thing as I, as I work my way in, notice it's a rubberized gasket or seal along the bottom, and notice there's a big flat area here on the side. What I like about HJC right now is they're not trying to invent their own Bluetooth communicator, because honestly, between Cena, Cardo, and some of the other guys, they have it dialed in on the third party side of things. So what they are doing is giving you a nice flat area to mount a third party commu comm unit if you wanna go that direction. Now as we start to pull everything out, I would love to see an emergency cheek pad removal system. I know Scorpion does it, some other guys do it well. They're integrating it. It's a nice comfort, or it's a nice safety feature really, especially buying a helmet or making the investment in something you're gonna ride a ton in. But again, we'll see them get better over time. Hopefully they take some of our feedback. Notice the snaps come out. It's a nice fully encompassing cheek pad. Again, it has that antimicrobial component to it. It's a soft microfiber and it's gonna wick really well. Very easy to clean these, you just run them underwater and then you allow them to air dry and you're good to go. As we begin to remove some of the other components of the helmet here, and I'm gonna to get to my comfort liner in a second. Again, very simple to remove it. Notice the thinness around the ear. It's gonna give you a little bit of room for a, for a comm unit, but I will say if we work our way into the helmet itself, there are no speaker cutaways. So to me, that would be a negative. If you don't have a Bluetooth communicator that has very thin speakers, what you might run into is a little bit of pressure point around the ear. They're giving you a shot at avoiding that by making it really, really thin around the ear, but there's no recess there. And I'd like to see recess in the EPS for especially some of these helmets that are more sport touring in nature. Now, if I go into my comfort liner itself, you notice a couple snaps, and HAC has been doing this forever, and everyone's caught on. I don't know if they were the first, but notice that there's no pressure point at the forehead. They connect at the brow, and connecting at the brow means it's going to be plastic to plastic connection, so you're not going to get those pressure points. But notice our 3D liner here that comes out. Big cutaways, no mesh, nothing to impede the airflow, but support where you need it. Notice that they've tried to make it as lightweight as possible and promote air circulation. So you can see these little dots, which are gonna be cutaway foam material, again, promoting the airflow through the helmet. And if we turn it inside out again, 
consistency in the material throughout, no issues, trying to be minimal in their seam construction there. And if we look at the inside of the helmet, now you're gonna see some of the grooves with big 10 millimeter vent holes, which are going to allow for that air circulation coming in, circulating around the head in between the dual density EPS liner and some of the exit holes through the back of the helmet. Again, extracting out of the back. Think about riding 500 mile day in a Texas heat. You need something that is really built around comfort, balance, and ventilation that's going to allow you to focus on your riding, not focus on the fact that you're sweating and dying and not getting proper airflow to your helmet, and not thinking about how loud the wind noise is from the amplitude in the vents that are baked into the helmet. I think this helmet accomplishes both, both missions really well. Again, my gripes are gonna be the actuation on the shield, my, or the, the drop down sun visor. My gripes would be the middle ground approach to third-party communicators with no recess in the EPS, but they did give you a nice flat area to install on the side. But again, if you're in this category, you're looking T1200 from Scorpion, you're looking Shoei GT Air, you're putting serious miles on the motorcycle, and my help is you're really well educated when you go to market and you decide to make that decision. The next step in your journey is to read other rider reviews. Click right here and see what other riders and purchases, purchasers of the ARFA ST have said at RevZilla.com. Start with my information, but you don't have to take my word for it. As always, we're shipped for free over 39 bucks. And if you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at revzilla.com or 877 792 9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown of the new HAC ARFA ST. Remember, subscribe to us at Revzilla TV, our YouTube channel. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.